Hello everyone, welcome for this new tutorial um, on After Effects. So today I'm going to show you how to make an AMV on After Effects. Recently I've been getting some comments saying that I need to do a tutorial on how I make my uh, AMVs. So today guys I'm going to show you for my second tutorial how to make an AMV. So first up, uh, we got all these clips right here. Uh, so my After Effects is lagging a bit because I'm screen recording while I'm editing. Um, so here we have all these clips. Uh, that I've already cut. If you want to know how to cut a clip, uh, basically just click on the clip and press Ctrl Shift D, and it's gonna allow you to make a cut onto your clip. And Ctrl Z if you want to go back. So, first thing that I do is very important. It's called Twixters, which will basically make your clip more uh, smoother and also. It'll allow you to make some slow motion, some very clean things, but keep in mind that you cannot do twixers on every scenes that you want, basically. So I especially chose this clip so I can make twixers on it and show you guys how to do it. Uh, but I'm also gonna teach you the theory of how to make an AMV with it. So first off, I'm gonna choose this clip and I'm gonna pre-compose it. So you can either control, at, uh, control shift C. So what you're gonna do now is double click onto your clip and it's gonna create that uh, section here and basically what you want to do now is you want to cut each image that has a movement so well, right now we're gonna see where his clothes are moving make sure guys that you always uh, pay attention to in case his clothes are moving or anything like if your character is having any movement always make sure to make a cut there so on so as you can see now we have all these little um, scenes so what we're gonna do is click on the first uh, clip and you're gonna press shift and you're gonna click on to the last clip that you have so basically it's gonna select everything so right now what you're gonna do is onto your first clip you're gonna move on the left so that it reduces every clip into one frame and once it's done you right click onto the first one and you click on keyframe assistant and you're gonna go into sequence layers once it's done it's gonna open this little tab and you're gonna press ok so right now if you actually press on play you can see that your clip is having only movements see there's only movements so that's perfect that's exactly what you want so once it's done, keep it selected and then you right click and you pre-compose. Always move all attributes into the new composition. Click on OK. And so right now, what we're going to do is add the Twixter um, plugin. But don't worry, I'm uh, going to put a link to how to download Twixters uh, very easily this time. Uh, so once it's done, uh, we're going to when you have it into your search bar, you're going to drag it into your clip and it's going to open that little uh, effect and control tab here. Uh, what you want to do is copy my settings. It actually looks a bit scary when you say it, but it's actually you just have to press on like three things. So don't worry about it. So first thing is in FPS is out FPS. You're going to click on that little check checkbox and uh, you're going to put the frame rate that is the same as your clip. So make sure because, for example, this clip is not 60 FPS. So you don't want to add 60 FPS there. Check what's the composition of your clip. So mine is 25 FPS. So what I'm going to do now is add 25 FPS into my frame rate. Now for frame interpretation, you're going to click on motion weighted blend. And for wrapping, you're going to press forward. That's it. That's literally it. And what you want to do is you click onto your Twixter Pro here, you press Ctrl C in order to uh, copy, or I don't know how, you, I don't know what device you have, but you want to copy that setting. So once it's done, you just delete that uh, layer, and then you're gonna be onto the main sequence. So what you want to do now is press Ctrl at T to open timer mapping, and now what you want to do is check where your clip ends. So mine ends here. So what you want to do is go back until the last image before the black screen and you press on that keyframe 
icon here so that it's gonna create a second keyframe and for that one that was already there you're gonna delete it and drag that the one you created until the end or whatever you want the clip to be to end sorry and so mine i want it to end here so there we go and what i'm gonna do now is press ctrl shift d in order to cut the clip and there we go guys i have my clip here what i want to do is now select the both keyframes and press on easy in so i press on f9 for me and you want to go into that little graph symbol here and you want to select the square so it's going to open the uh, easy in um, graph so now it's a bit tricky because uh, it depends on what you want to do how you want your uh, clip to look like for me i want the clip to be quiet i don't want any slow motion i want the clip to be pretty much stable if you get what i mean let me show you so i'm gonna put that little line here and this one here and i'm gonna show you how it looks like after so once you selected the graph that you want like how you want it to to look like you're gonna press on that graph again and then you want to go into your effect and preset panel and you want to type rsmp which is basically uh, allowing it to have motion blur basically motion blur is gonna be if your clip has any uh, uh, wraps it's gonna allow you to have less wrapping because it's gonna create some uh, motion blur uh, onto your clip so let me try to actually get this one here there we go so let me show you how my clip looks like now sometimes it's gonna be a little bit laggy uh, all you have to do is just come back at the beginning let it play maybe a second time and then you can have your your clip well well done so as you can see there's a bit of wrapping and i don't want that so i'm going to select the two keyframes again and i'm going to try to make this graph look a little bit better so that um, my clip looks also better That's much better. So we got our first uh, clip done here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do every clip done with my tricksters. Hey, uh, while I was doing the uh, the other clips, I was also thinking of showing you of something. I mean, giving you a tip, guys. So basically, sometimes when you do your clip, what you can do to make it very interesting is. Um, for example, this scene is because you cannot make tricksters with scene that has like very fast movements or like very like uh, there's a lot of things happening into the scene. For this one, you can see that this guy is punching the other guy, but it's so fast as you can see in one frame he moves this completely, both of them. So what you can do to still have that fast to show the punch, basically what you can do is go to the next frame and do a cut. And as you can see, he's not moving much here. And so you can do the trickster onto that and leave this here. So basically it's gonna make the scene more interesting. And some of you may want, may wonder, yes, but after, how am I supposed to do the transition? So don't worry, what you can do is after, when you've done with your trickster, you can go into your first clip, click on shift, click the second clip, so you select the both of them, and you can just pre-compose by right-clicking again and just doing this thing. There we go. So you have the full clip here and it won't, the Twixter will not affect the first frame. It will only affect what's the rest of it because you've already done the other clip. It's two different clips into one, but the other clip is also, uh, is unique basically. So yeah, so I'm just going to carry on to doing the, the other scenes so I can show you guys the rest at the end. Hey, so basically right now I've just finished all the Twixters that I needed for my uh, edit so right now what I do usually is uh, basically we're gonna I'm gonna teach you how to make a transition so uh, there are many ways to transition on After Effects and uh, also I want to teach you guys how to not make your transition look annoying and how to be you know diverse in what you're doing so Okay, so the first transition, I'm gonna show you the basic ones so I can 
you can already know how to do that one so right now you type motion trial onto your effect and preset panel and you're going to add it into your clip that you want to do a transition on so once it's applied you're going to have this little uh plug in here i mean this preset on your effect and control panel uh so what you're gonna do now is go into output width and you're gonna press uh for example i'm gonna do 400 uh for um output width and output weight i'm gonna also do 400. so once it's done you press maro ages box and then you're gonna control c so you can copy and just apply it onto your other clips if you don't want to do it again and again and again so once it's done you're gonna click here on that little square you're gonna right click click on new and on the right you can see null object so you're gonna create the null object and you're gonna have that layer above your clip so once you have it you're gonna control shift d to cut it so it can be trimmed to your size of a clip just like that once it's done you can either do a in and out or you can just do a in so what i'm gonna do is only i'm, I'm only gonna do a zoom out but i'm not gonna do a true transition onto my clip let me show you so i'm only gonna keep that layer i'm gonna go into my clip first and i want to enable the motion blur for my clip and my null object that little symbol here and you see this add symbol here you're gonna click on it keep your finger into your left mouth button so you can drag it to your clip i mean to the null object that is right above as you can see now it's parented they are both linked they're together so once it's done you're gonna click on s to open scale click on the clock symbol so it creates a keyframe and that keyframe you're gonna drag it to the end of the clip right here make sure it's at the end and i'm gonna press uh let's say 170 so don't worry if it's all zoomed it's normal so what you want to do now is you're going to select the both keyframes and easy in so once the both keyframes are selected and they are both is in you want to go to that graph again and select a square that was there and you wanna so it's really up to you guys i, I do it my own way but it's up to you what i usually like to do it's this graph it allows to have a pretty fast uh beginning and the end will be a bit slower so let's see how it looks like that's pretty good i like that it was perfect so there we go so once it's done you're gonna think of the clips that you actually want to apply the zoomed so i don't want to add it here for example i might want to add it here let's do it here so i'm just gonna paste the motion tile and do my uh and do my uh, transition okay so i just copied the same settings so what you want to do now is i'm going to show you a different way to do a transition i mean it's going to be the same one but in another way so you basically enable the scale again and you're gonna create that keyframe and you're gonna leave it at the beginning leave it here and you're gonna go to the end of your clip and then you want to press um let's say 80 no actually you know what 60 let's press 60 you're gonna select the both keyframe press f9 to easy in go to the graph again and what you want to do now is zoom out so actually let me check if i apply the motion tile okay the motion tile is applied perfect so don't freak out if you see all these uh, weird characters like that are cloned uh it's all good so what you want to do is find a way to not see this annoying settings so you can do pretty much anything you want so i think what i'm gonna do is zoom here let's see how it looks like Hmm. I don't think I like it. So what we want to do is make it a little bit harsher. Mm, I don't like it as well. So let's find another way to do that. Uh, 
I'm not a big fan of it as well. Let's see. Yeah, that's perfect. I just wanted to do a small zoom out so it looks all nice and good. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is show you how to do another transition. You don't have to do always zooms in and zoom out for your transition. Uh, you can also do flash, blur and many other ways. So what I want to do here is for this clip. So this is when the beat drops. So what I want to do now is create an adjustment layer. So guys, this is all up to you. This is if you only downloaded some, some effects. Uh, this is one of the effects I downloaded. I can actually put some link into uh, some nice editing packs where I downloaded my effects. Um, but this is all up to you. This is just another way to do it. If you have those effects, if you have something that looks like it. So what you can do is go into your animation, apply animation presets. And what you can add is, for example, what's called one frame. It's a very popular effect that I use in pretty much all of my edits. So I just use a one framer and apply it to my adjustment layer. And I want to make sure that this is only two frame long. So it's not too much. And just have a look at how nice this transition is. So that's it. That's pretty much just a flash, but it's pretty nice. You can also, for example, do something like you create another adjustment layer. One, two, up. And then what you want to do is if you have this effect as an example, this is just an example, guys, to give you ideas of how we can uh, do a transition. I have this effect called U Flicker. You can actually probably do it by yourself as well. I mean, you can create that effect by yourself. You don't especially need an effect, uh, a plugin for that. But as an example, what you can do is a hue flicker. It's pretty nice, actually. One, two. To do a transition. Let me show you how it looks like. There we go. That's it. That's pretty sick. So you don't always have to do zoom out and zoom in in case you want to in case you're only doing that because it can be actually pretty annoying sometimes to only see zooms. Uh, so make sure you can actually do our other effects that can be used for transition. Also, this is another tip to give you. What you can do is I have this little flash right here and flash are sometimes used for um, predicting an effect that's coming ahead. For example, this may be a bit confusing, but for example, what you can do is after the flash, you can add another effect right here and you can actually put two effects into one layer. So let me show you. So for example, I have this effect, this kind of glitchy effect that I added onto my adjustment layer. What I can do as well is I can use another effect called Halftone Glue Glow. And I can change the color right here. I may want to do something blue because the clip looks a little bluish. Uh, it probably changed a little bit of uh, the uh, lightning. Not too much, actually. And probably the threshold. Let's see. Like that. Okay. And let's check it out. See, it looks pretty nice. So you can actually do that if you want. Uh, this is just one of many ways to do an effect. So it kind of gives a like, glitchy vibes with another effect on it. And, you know, you can do many things with it. And this is probably better than a regular transition with a zoom. So here, if you need that effect, um, make sure to comment down below. And uh, I'm going to try to put some links into some editing packs in the description of this video. So right now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to apply my effects into my clips that I want. Uh, so I can be focused on it and then I'm going to come back for, so I can actually show you some other cool effects to do. Okay, so right now we're going to do the shake. So um, I want to explain you something first. Uh, so shake is a tricky thing to do on After Effects. I mean, it's a great app to do it, obviously. But shake is pretty complicated. Uh, I always recommend to download your shake effects from an editing pack because making your own shake can be very tricky sometimes. Not only uh, it can be tricky to find the right amount, it also takes you so much time to actually, you know, find the right speed and amount and everything. So you're going to lose a lot of time. I remember I used to spend countless minutes 
trying to find the right shake for one of my clips and in the end i just didn't like it and it was just ruining my entire edit so uh, i always recommend to actually download shake i swear you can find some shake effects in free editing packs that's exactly what i did um trust me it takes two minutes to do it it's pretty easy i'm gonna try to put some link into the description but if you actually want to do your own shake then you just type twitch into the effect and preset panel you're gonna drag that effect to your clip and what you're gonna do here is um for example for amant this is just an example guys uh you can put 40 and for the speed you can put down on something like 30 and what you can do as well is click on enable and maybe click on light and slide so once you've done that you're gonna click on amant and it's gonna key, it's gonna create a keyframe automatically to the from the beginning of your clip you're gonna go to the end of your clip and just enable twitch and you're gonna click on the uh keyframe right here it's gonna create a second keyframe and you're gonna drag the keyframe to the beginning of your clip so once it's done you got your shake pretty much and if you want if you don't want to slide you want something more vertically you can actually go to the uh, operation operator controls go to slide and you can actually create your own shake. So by direction, you just try to uh, find a direction. My computer is so laggy, I'm sorry. But you can actually try to find a vertical shake. I cannot watch it because my computer is way too laggy right now. Um, that's why also I use my own shake because I know that in the end it's going to be good. Um, but yeah, um, this is how you do it. Um, this is just a quick tip to how to do it, but honestly, as I said, I do not recommend it. I swear, I swear you can actually find free editing packs that has shakes in it. I swear. That's what I that's exactly what I did. It takes really two minutes to do it. I'm gonna try and put some links in the description, as I said. Uh if I said it. <laughs> but uh yeah, this is pretty much it. And we're gonna move on to the if I'm correct, the sharpen. That is not correct. Okay, so right now I have just added the shake onto my videos. So I want to teach you actually one more effect. It's probably not a teach, but this is for... I'm basically showing you how to make an AMV. So also you have to download things because in AMV, it's very important to download some effects, some, some cool things to make your AMV more interesting and to pop out some of your clip. Uh, so I'm te teaching you the theory of editing an AMV. I'm not teaching you uh, how to, uh, you know, download. I mean, uh, you know what I mean? I I'm teaching you how to make an AMV. So you also have to, on your side, just, you know, download some of the effects that, you know, can be interesting for you. Or, you know, find some effects that you think are your style. This is just basically showing you how to make an AMV in general. So what I can show you as well, that can be, it's very used in pretty much every AMV you can see online, is the flicker effect. So maybe you don't know the name of this effect and you actually want to know the names. So I'm showing you a effect called flicker. So it's, very it's a very interesting effect actually, that can be very interesting sometimes. So it's basically going to create those very small black flashes or it can also be used for making a scene a little bit more uh you know aggressive sometimes but it, it depends so let me show you for example when to use it i personally usually use it when before the uh the clip that is coming ahead or at the beginning of the clip so this is how it looks see it's very small but it's kind of a transition to the next clip you know it's actually pretty interesting and what you can do is do it this way so that the transition is still you know here onto the second video it's actually pretty interesting i really like doing this but um um uh, let me actually do it for the other clips but this is pretty much it this is pretty much it um this is gonna be pretty cool effect sometimes to do a transition or make a clip either more interesting or a little bit more emotional it really depends on what you want to use it for so right now i'm just going to apply it to some of my clips and then i'm going to come back to you guys so what i'm going to do now is upscaling 
the images make it look better so i'm gonna also add cc and i'm gonna also show you how to actually do some color correction it's either you have a cc and you create an adjustment layer and just put it above your clip so i don't really need to teach you guys this method but i'm gonna actually teach you another method to actually uh, make your clip better look better so you create an adjustment layer put it above every single clip that's into your timeline and what you want to add is sharpen from your uh, effect and preset panel and once you added the sharpen never actually put too much because if you put too much your clip is going to look really weird it's going to look even worse than not adding sharpen at all so add sharpen into your adjustment layer and make sure that adjustment layer is above every single clip so what i usually use is around 40 to 60 max so here i'm gonna add 60. so i just added 60 of sharpen onto this adjustment layer so i'm actually because we're not using cc for this one i want to show you how to actually uh make your clip look better without having any plugin so you add sharpen amount into uh sorry sharpen into your adjustment layer and what you also want to add is unsharp mask so unsharp mask add it to the same adjustment layer and you may actually want to add two of them to the same adjustment layer so what you can this is really up to you uh i for example i'm gonna add this much sharpen and and sharp mask but it's really up to you to uh to use whatever you want and as you can see this is the difference with the sharpen and the unsharp mark so as you can see the unsharp mark allowed your clip like the dark parts of your clip to look darker and the sharpen allows the extremities of the character to look more sharp. So this looks already like way, way better. So right now I'm also gonna create an adjustment layer and a second adjustment layer. And you wanna add details, preserving and upscaling to this, to this clip, to this adjustment layer. And you wanna add 100% to those three settings. You wanna click on here and add details preserving and you want to clip to fit to comp width boom that's it so this is going to allow uh, some of the unnecessary objects to look blurry so that the main subject of your video is going to pop up more so it's a pretty important setting to add onto your clip a preset pretty much and what you want to do now is add another adjustment layer again put it make sure that everything is above the clips that you have it doesn't matter for the adjustment layers but for the clips it does so after you created that adjustment layer you want to add curves onto this adjustment layer this is basically uh how to uh change the colors of your clip so you click on curves add it to your adjustment layer and now you're going to create three dots one here one here and one here and then you want to play with that graph in however you want so that it looks the way you want basically you know you can just do anything you want with this graph uh, you can actually like change the colors the the luminosity anything everything you can do so this is how to actually change the colors of your clip uh, make it look better uh, I usually use uh, CCs now, so uh, what I'm going to do is actually add my own CC to my clips and then I'm going to come back to you guys. Have no need to fight tonight, tonight. So guys, here we are, we're done. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope I helped you with anything. Uh, I just want to say I'm, I'm sorry if I, I was a bit anxious when I was talking. Uh, I'm not really used to talk to a microphone. That's not something that I usually do. So um, so yeah, I was a little bit uh, shy, but um, I'm gonna try and get used to talk to the microphone. Uh, maybe next time I might do a, a video uh, face cam. I've actually, so maybe it's actually I've already planned everything. I have some many, 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 many projects to to come. Um, also, you know, I live with my roommates, and it, sometimes when they were noisy, I had to cut, I had to stop, and they restart, and uh, it was a little bit weird to do that. 
So um, next time I'm going to try and do when, you know, I'm sure there will be no noise um, and, and try and do this tutorial in, uh, in a better time. And uh, also, I actually use my phone for my microphone. I didn't use my actual microphone because I wasn't able to set uh, to set it up to my computer. But next time, I'm going to have a, a banger of a microphone, a very sick microphone uh, with amazing quality. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys are helped you. I'm going to try and leave some links into the description to help you um, to help you uh, download some editing packs, some overlays. I didn't talk about overlays. I'm going to do it into uh, with another tutorial. So don't worry about it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and see you soon.